Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this morning's uh, testimony of the morning summer proceedings. Imam, you have the floor. Uh, please give us some prayers. Imam C. Thank you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إذن صرار المستقيم مصرار الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين وإن تستفته فقد جاكم الفتح نصر من الله وفتح قريب ونبشر المؤمنين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل اعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق اذا وقب ومن شر نفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد اذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل اعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس اله الناس من شر وسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنه والناس ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين شكرا امام سي بشوب يو هاف ذا فلور بليز ثانك يو تشيرمان لورد جود اوف ماسي اوف غريس اوف كومباشن اوف لوف وي كونتينيو تو كول ابون يو as a nation we continue to ask for your divine providence your divine mercy your divine grace over this land and we also ask for your healing and for your giving for your forgiving spirit to spread across the people of this land we continue to ask that the spirit of patience will be in the people of this nation so as we hear things that are unpleasant to the air. We ask, Lord, that you will always give us the spirit of forbearance and that we should learn that vengeance belongs to you and you are the one who will repay on behalf of all those who are hurt. And so we continue to ask that those who will testify here will come and boldly speak the truth this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much indeed, um, uh, Bishop Rodico. Council, are we ready with this morning's witness? If we are, uh, let's proceed. Indeed, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Usher, can you please usher in the witness? Aye, Fatma Tajawara. Aye, Fatma Tajawara. Do swear. Do hear, yes. Do swear that I'll speak the truth. I will speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, all. And good morning to you, Madam Jawara. Good morning. Thank you very much for accepting our invitations. Given that um, you've just come back from a long journey, you're tired, but yet still you made it today. We appreciate that a lot. Thank you. As you already know, my name is Maria Masingate, and I will be leading you on behalf of the commission this morning. For your evidence today, the topics that will be focused on is number one, your educational background, so that people will get an insight of who you are as a person, your political career, your progress in politics, that is, your arrest and detention, and the impact of your arrest and detention on you and your family. For today's testimony, I'll ask that you be comfortable and calm. It is a conversation between you and I. I'm just here to lead you to give your evidence. So if I ask a question that you are not so sure about, 
just stop me and I will clarify the question for you. And um, if you feel uncomfortable at any time or you feel that you need to take a break, do let me know and then you will take a break. I hope you are okay to start now. Yeah. Thank you very much. Can you please tell us your names? My name is Fatuke Jawara. When and where were you born? I was born in 89 with Perseverance Street, Banjo. Which year? 1983, October 13. Can you please um, give us a brief of your educational background from primary school? I, start <clears throat> I started my English education at Kampama Primary School, from there to Bondong Primary School, wherein I sat to the common entrance examination and went to Greater Banjul Junior Secondary School and later to go to Senior Secondary School. Upon completion, I went to Gambia Home Economic Training Institute. From there, I enrolled to Management Development Institute, and I went on a series of training gender. You also mentioned that you did series of trainings in Ghana. Yeah. Can you tell us what year that was? That was 2005. And when did you finish that training? It lasts for two weeks. After the training in Ghana, did you pursue any other training? Not, not at all. Can you please tell us um, what area of concentration you studied while you were in Ghana? Politics. Was it with respect to a specific field or it was just politics? Can you repeat that question? Was it with respect to a specific field, like politics and something, or it was just politics? Yeah, it was about the capacity enhancement on women participation in politics. And um, can you tell us what uh, led to you participating in that particular course? Because I was among the youths who was a political activity, then I was nominated by my party to represent them with us. Which party was that? United Democratic Party. You did mention that um, you were among the youths in the party that was nominated to attend that course. Can you please tell us about your political activities? My political activity was I was uh, participating in political platform, grassroots sensitization, and I also drag women folks into politics in my area. When did you start getting involved in politics? This was the early career of my primary school days. That was quite young. Yeah. Um, what motivated you to enter into politics at that early age? Yeah, I was just from school one day and I saw a crowd of politicians. They were campaigning, so I decided to stop and listen to them where I requested an itinerary from one, uh, I think it's Ibrahim Asolo Sanding and Lopi. So they gave me the itinerary. I went through it. After listening to the, uh, the speakers in the meeting, I was motivated, so I keep following them. Sometimes I follow head AI campaigns like Pat Camara and others. I keep their backs for them when we are going for campaign. My family do stop me sometimes, but I just keep following them. So I build relationship with many of them in the political arena. You did mention that you did enter into politics at um, a tender age. During the time you entered into politics, did you hold any 
major office? Yes, I was uh, a youth mobilizer at the area where I was residing, and I was also a pooling agent, agent at that time. I was also one of the youth who stood on a political platform and campaigned for a political party. Uh, I was recognized by many, and later I was nominated as the ward councillor of the area, which I narrowly lose by the then ruling party. Can you tell us which area you're referring to? Uh, KMC, Talending Consequence. Can you tell us the year that you were nominated into the leadership of the party? 2008, I believe. By 2008, you were actively a youth mobilizer of the UDP, correct? Yeah. Apart from uh, being a youth mobilizer, did you hold any major office I was in the UDP party? Yeah, I was later elected at the Congress as the female, national female youth president, nationwide. As the national female youth president, can you tell us what your responsibilities entailed? My responsibility is to mobilize youths in their large number to conduct, conduct a campaign for my party. During the time you were actively um, participating as a youth mobilizer, can you tell us what the relationship was between the state and the opposition parties? The uh, can you please repeat the question? Can you tell us what the relationship was between the state and the opposition parties then? The, the relationship was not cordial. You can go ahead, please. I said the relationship was not cordial. What do you mean by the relationship was not cordial? Uh, there is a great risk attached to read to be an opposition during the then regime because uh, my life was always in a threat and many people do advise me to stay away from politics. Can you please tell us what kinds of threats were made on your life? Yeah, my political opponents do stood at a platform sometimes. They use words that they will, they will arrest me, I will be arrested. They should make me silence. I'm not the only representative at that area, but I'm just stubborn. Can you please tell us when these threats started against your life? This was the time when I represent my party as a pooling agent. Sometimes I get go into problem with them because during the counting I was there with the counting agents and from there also during the campaign period we do have some problem with our opponents in the areas. And what year was this? This was since I started the politics. And yet still you continued actively participating in politics. Can you please tell us why? Yes. I still continue being active because I know what I was doing was not illegal one and it's my constitutional right to choose the party of my own. As a young woman then in politics, can you please tell us if there were other young women as you that were also engaged into politics just like you? We do have, but those days it's very difficult for us to have uh, position holders of young, young ones because many think that they will be arrested or get into some of the trouble that I went through. 
you mentioned that many thought that they would be arrested or get into some of the troubles that you got through. Can you please tell us about that? Well, there was a time we went to a meeting at Batokunku. We got arrested and later I was released on that day and they told me that I'm going to be an independent witness and my colleagues were detained. So when I came back, many feel skeptical and they told me that I should stay away. And there was a time also we went for a meeting at Tujering uh, where we got a problem with some police officers. Uh, I think that was the time when one of the journalists, one Seni Marina and another journalist was arrested and taken to the NIA. That time also many people think that I should stay away from politics and they feel skeptical. When I even called the youths that we should go, they told me that me, I'm not going because my family told me to stay away. Can you please tell us about the Bat um incident? When was this? I can't recall, but we were at a meeting where uh, some police officers came and they said they will arrest us. Uh, but I could remember one bar who was there as they are head. He's at two jaring police station before. And um, did they tell you the reason why they were arresting you? No, we are just on that meeting. We didn't even know what is going on and our chairman decided to run away and leave us. We saw some elderly people telling us that I'm going to perform ablution, I'm doing this, but we didn't know that something is going wrong. We just concentrating on the meeting. But later we find out that the police surrounded everywhere and they said we are under arrest. Can you please tell us what the nature of the meeting was? What was the meeting about? This was the house to house campaign being organized by the youth wing because by then we cannot afford to uh, mount on political rallies. We did do it like every quarterly of the year. So we did our mass sensitization at the grassroots level by going to the chairmen and women and ask them to call people within that area so that we can talk to them. During this time, was it in preparation of any form of election or was it just uh, a normal campaign? Yeah, we did this as a normal campaign because we cannot have rallies in all the places. So before we have the rally, the quarterly, early quarterly rally, we do, do the sensitization so that when the rally time is about to come, many people will be alerted. As at the time um, you were rounded up and arrested, do you know for how long um, you were arrested? Can you recall? Sorry. Can, can you me? recall for how long you were arrested the bat with respect to the Batakunku incident? No. When we reached at the police station, they released me and they left the men there. Do you know if they were eventually released that day? Yes, they were released and we went back home. Day after, uh, they went and arrested the chairman of the area. So when they arrested the chairman, um, Solo Sanden called me that our chairman was arrested and we are the cause of everything, so we need to go there. Whatever the cause might be, we need to go there. So. He called me, he called Honorable Fake Bakoli, Jere Fati. Uh, we have a small team, a technical team for that matter, That's, that is running the affairs of the youth wing. So I think we only have two female. We do, all, we do have other representative, but the active one is I and Aram, Aramata Demba of Birkama. So we joined the team. We went to see the chairman at the police station and Solo told the officer in charge that we went and organized this meeting at this man's residence. If you are to arrest, you are to arrest us and release this man. Then that was the time they got arrested and they released the man. Who was Solo Sandeng? This was the 
man who was beaten to death by the NIA at April, at April 14. Did he hold any major roles in the party? By then, he was the Secretary General of the National Youth Wing. Kindly tell us about the two-jaring incident. The two-jaring incident was, uh, we are just on a meeting, and they said we, we should not uh, conduct that meeting at that place, so we just got arrested. But I think after they were released, Were you part of the people that were arrested during the two jarring incident? Yes, I was there, but when I reached the police station, one officer told me that I'm going to be an independent witness. He released me, then I go home and call Mr. Dab. I told him that we got arrested at two jarring, but I was released. But these police officers who arrested us are the same police officers who gave us a permit, and I have a copy of that permit. So he told me to uh, take the permit to him. Then I decided to copy and keep the copy and give the other copy to him. Uh, I think later they went to court when they had that, uh, they issued us a permit. I think the case was throw, thrown out. For these two incidents, do you know on what charges that uh, you were arrested? Well, I think one of the charges among them is unlawful assembly. I cannot even remember. And as far as you can recall, you mentioned that you had a permit for the two jarring incident. Did you also have a permit for the Batakunku incident? No, for the Batakunku incident, we are not using uh, microphone. We are just having a sensitization at our chairman compound. But for the two jarring incident, we have a, a form of program because of somebody just uh, sent us a money that we should have enjoy ourselves because we've been in the struggle for the past years. We are not being paid, so we need to get something. So we said it's not healthy for us to take this money and go and make any party, but rather we should organize something and bring our supporters together and do the political activity. So during that meeting, uh, the, there are some members from the APRC who cross carpet the Green Youths to the UDP, and this was captured by those journalists, Seni Marina and the other, I can't recall the name, so they too got arrested. What did you make of these two incidents, the Batakunku incident and the two-jaring incident? What did you make up of? The two-jaring program was a big program. We were using microphones, and we have a musical jamboree too. Uh, the question really is, uh, why do you think you were targeted and arrested? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but I think because uh, that, that place was a very stronghold of the APRC, but after the incident, I heard that the Alcalo of the area report, reported <coughs> us that we do have campaign at the area. Apart from the Batakunku incident and the two-jaring incident, were you ever arrested again during your political career? No, I was never arrested except April 14, 2016. Can you please tell us about the incident of April 14, 2016? April 14, 2016, I was from school, MDI. On my way back, I met my college at Westfield, and these people were chased by paramilitaries, and they decided they started running into different directions. So that was the time I and some of them got arrested. We were thrown inside a pickup. 
we were taken to PIU headquarters at Carnifing. From there, we were escorted to Sorry, I just want to take you back a little bit so that we can get clarity as to what happened on that particular day. You said you were from school. And uh, where did this incident actually occur? At Westfield. Can you please describe exactly where at Westfield? Uh, it's at the, I think it's the John, at, at the, Highway there, at the Johnson. When you arrived at Westfield that day, what did you observe? I observed that some people were gathered. Among them, among them are my party militants. Which party are you referring to? UDP. What? Can you please tell us what the gathering was all about? Well, I cannot be specific because it was so crowded. I cannot, I cannot describe. What were they doing in that gathering? Well, there was a mixture of both the police and the civilians. So, and there is a big push and pull. What kind of push and pull? Uh, like uh, there was military officers chasing people and there is a resistance from the other group. As at the time you arrived, was that the exact time that you saw this push and pull, or did you stay there for a while before the push and pull happened? Well, I cannot recall all these things, but I think I observed some of these things like that. That's what I'm trying to understand. When you arrived, was there a push and pull already? Did you meet a push and pull happening between the police officers and the crowd that was gathered there? Or did you come then later on, the police came and then the push and pull happened? Yes. Which is which, please? After. Yeah. So now let's talk about while you were there before the arrival of the police officers. What was the crowd doing? Uh, this, this, this is a different group. You, some are gathered there, some are there, and some are... It, they didn't stay at one place. What was the purpose of the gathering, if you know? Well, I came to know that the purpose of the gathering was for protesting for electoral reform. Do you know if they had any placards with them or anything? Can you repeat the question? Did you know if they had any banners or any placards with respect to what they were protesting for? Yes, I know of one that was for electoral reform. Can you recall some of the people that were gathering there, some of the leaders of that protest? I cannot recall all of them. Please give us the names of the ones you can recall. I only recall them when everybody got arrested and picked in a truck. The crowd that was gathered there, were they chanting or saying anything? No. They were just walking by? Yeah. So once, the, once you were standing there and the crowd was walking by, what happened? We saw the, uh, the officers chasing the other crowd from that direction coming to the other end. Which officers are you referring to, please? The PIU officers. And can you please tell us how they were chasing the other crowd coming towards you? They are chasing them to get them arrested. 
can you please tell us if the officers had anything on them that day? S some of them had their riot gears with them. Some were carrying buttons. And can you please tell us what you observed about how they were chasing people? Well, I cannot observe. Uh, the only thing I can observe was my own. When, when one of them uh, chased me, and later it was joined by two, and they get me inside the truck. Before you got into the truck, can you please tell us how that happened? Well, because everybody is running for his or her own safety, so I cannot explain how this happened at that point. I'm talking about you personally. You said they chased you, and then you were put in a truck. So how were you put in a truck? We were thrown inside the truck. I met some of my colleagues there. Did they do anything to you before putting you inside the truck? They just threw me inside, and I asked why one of the officers slapped me. So I just hide my safe for my safety, and when one of the uh, old man, one old man was there, he told them that I'm not part of this. I'm not part of this by the name Kalilu Sedikan. He told them that I was looking for my fish money at the mayor's residence. I'm not among. So I could recall one officer slapped the man twice and spoke to him in a mandinka spoke to him in a mandinka and kwemu keba solimality and they started they just drove out from the place can you please help us um, interpret what was said in mandinka he told the old man that like you you are known less in 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 a mandinka language kwemu keba solimality Okay, and after that, what happened? After that, we are taken to PIU. Roughly, can you recall how many people were put into that truck? I cannot recall, but I think the number is 22 or 27. Did you recognize anyone else that was put into the truck? Yes. Please, can you tell us the people that you recognized in the truck? In the truck, Modungwam, Langmarong, Fatu Kamara, Nogo Njai, Kalilu Sedikan, two students from Gunjur, uh, Las, uh, Abboka Jite, Kafubayo, Lasa Nabiai, uh, Alaji Jame, Modu Ture, Morufati. Uh, I cannot recall the others. And Falang Sonko. As far as you can recall, how many women were in that truck? Three. Sorry, that will be yourself. Nogo Njai, Fatu Kamara. You also mentioned that two students were in that truck. How did you know that they were students? I heard it from my colleagues when we were at the NIA. Concentrating on... Um, that particular truck. Did anything happen to you while you were in that truck? You mentioned that you were slapped. Did anything else happen to you? Not at all. How about the others in the truck? I didn't see it. Where were you taken from where you were? PIU headquarters. And where was this PIU headquarters? Anything. From the journey, 
from Westfield to PIU headquarters. Did anything happen on the way? No. Did they tell you the reason why you were being arrested? No. Did they do anything to you while you were being driven from Westfield to the PIU? No. Can you please tell us what happened upon your arrival at the PIU? Upon our arrival at the PIU, we went to a big hall where we sit down and a panel was brought and photographs were taken. Uh, we, we saw some security officers from different institutions and uh, security heads. They were discussing among themselves. Did this happen immediately upon your arrival at the PIU or did it take a while before that happened? They came after our arrival. How long did you stay at the PIU before the arrival of the security heads? These people were imme immediately we were brought, they came, came there. Did they charge you with any offense while you were at the PIU? No. Did they take your statement while you were at the PIU? I cannot recall, no. You mentioned that they took some pictures. Did they tell you the reason why they were taking those pictures? No. Can you please tell us how this um, taking of the picture was conducted? Uh, they took single photos of each and every one of us. They brought some banners and they gave it to one Mohammed Jaune and Nogo Njai, and they took photos of the banners too and some flyers and wrestled. The banners that they gave you to take pictures with, where did they come from? Well, I saw them from the security officers. Can you recall what was written on the banners? Among them, I saw electoral reform, and I saw another one, Jame Moscow. You mentioned the presence of um, security chiefs there. Did they do or say anything while they were there? No. And how did you know that there were security chiefs there? I saw them. Who did you in particular see? I didn't know them by then, but later Pat Kamara and Nogoy told me, this one is the interior, this one is the IG. And, do and, you I, know and I could recall seeing one of the officers there who solo Sunday took a money f from his pocket and gave it to him that he should take the money to his, half, his family. And which officer was that? I don't know the name, but I think maybe Modungam or somebody might know, but I saw Solo giving him the money to take it to his family. And do you know the names of these um, security chiefs you're referring to that were there? I didn't know them before, but during our conversation at the prison, Fat Kamara and Nogoy told me that the interior was there and the IG. Do you know who the interior minister was at that time? It is Usman Sonko. And who was the IG at that time? I think it's Yankuba Sonko. Did you get the chance to have a conversation among yourselves while you were gathered there at the PIU? No. Did they give you the opportunity to say anything while you were there? No. 
So after taking your pictures with the banners, what happened? Uh, we were put in a separate vehicle again. I think solo Sunday, no go enjoy and I don't know where the Kafu Bio is among them. We are arranged in a pickup. The rest were parked in a truck. Do you know the reason why you were separated then? No. And where were you taken? We were taken to Mile 2 Central Prison. Can you tell us what happened on your arrival at Mile 2 Central Prison? On our arrival at Mile 2, our belongings were taken. We were searched and they warned us strictly to be, uh, to, to be abide by the prison law. Did they show you any charge sheet saying that you were charged for a particular offense or what? No. As at that time, can you recall the people that, because you mentioned that you were separated, can you recall the people that went with you to mile two? Everybody was there except for Nogoi, Solo, and Mudungwam. So Fat Kamara was with you at that time? Yes. Where in Mile 2 prison were you kept? At the remain wing of the female wing. You mentioned that you were from school on that particular day. Can you tell us please what you were wearing that day? I was wearing a, a trouser and a top. And did you have any other belongings with you then? I have my hand out with me in my bag. Was that hand out taken when you arrived at mile two? Well, I don't know. The bag was taken from me when we arrived at mile two. Where did they keep you in mile two? They kept me in a cell. Which part of the cell? You know, there is the female wing on one side and there is the male wing. Which part of the cell were you kept? The, remind, the female wing remained wing. And can you please tell us the conditions in that cell? It was very congested. Others have to lie down on the floor and others have to be on top. And um, where did you lie down exactly in that congested place? We don't have a space at that particular night, but the inmates were very supportive and they assist us that we should be strong and they give us a place to lie down on top and they sacrifice to lie down on the floor. How did you feel at that time being in prison? Well, it's above explanation. And I have I told Fat Kamara that this is not the end. We will be taken to the NIA. He told me that if you came from a good family, you should speak something good. We haven't done anything. Why did that thought cross your mind that you'll be taken to the NIA? Because I, I, I've seen political opponents who got arrested what they came across, much more that we are accused of being protesting that Jamie must go and so on. Can you please tell us um, at what time you arrived at Mile 2 prisons that day? This was in the afternoon. 
Was it before or after the afternoon prayers? I think it's after the afternoon prayers. What happened after you were settled in on the female remand wing? Uh, what happened was late hours of night, the cell was knocked and they request for us to come out and the inmates were praying for us. They told us that they will set you free. I told them that no, they said yes. One of the female told me that I have an unwanted pregnancy, but for you, your case is just a minor case. You will be released. We prayed to each other, and they gave us a message to carry to their families. When we came out... So at the time when you had the knock on the door, you thought you were being released, right? I never thought so. It's the inmates who thought that we would be released. And at what time of the day was this? You've already told us that you arrived at mile two after the afternoon prayers. Mm -hmm. Yes. This was late hours of night. Can you recall the time? Well, I cannot recall, but it was very late. So what happened afterwards? When we came out from the prison, we were taken to the commissioner's office and we saw the mails also from the other side, the mail wing. So one officer was holding my back. I came to know her name later from Fatu Kamara. I, I cannot speak Jola, but Fat Kamara said the lady told the NIA officers that, where are you carrying this female to? Uh, this, they are female, and this particular man responded that a woman who walks like a man get the payback of a man. So that was the time Fat Kamara told me that what you told me is coming. I say, what was that? She told me that, did you heard what this lady was talking to this man about? I told her, I don't know. I cannot speak their language. She told me that they are up to something. Can you recall how many people came for you that night? Well, I think it's their operation team, but there are many because they were they have many there are many vehicles parked outside there. Did you recognize any of the people that came for you? The only person I can recognize is the driver. Can you recall his name? His name is Sehti Jan Kamara. Apart from uh, Sehti Jan Kamara, can you recognize any distinct future in any of the people that came for you? No, even Seh Omar, I came to know him when I was admitted at the hospital, when he came to see a college at the hospital. Is it Sheikh Omar or Sheikh Tijan Kamara? Which one is it? Sorry, it's Sheikh Tijan Kamara. <coughs> Thank you very much. After this particular NIA operative said that to you, what came to your mind then? Can you repeat the question? After they told you that, sorry, I can't say it in uh, plain English. Um, a woman that does a man's work, something like that. You mentioned it earlier. I can't recall all of it. Yeah. After he said that to you, what happened? That was the time we were taken to the NIA. When they finish the conversation, they speak with the commissioner and the securities at the, uh, mile two. Then we were later escorted to NIA. As far as you can recall, the, the prison authorities protest when they were taking you out of prison at that particular time of the night. I 
Can you repeat the question? Sorry. Did the prison authorities protest when they were removing you from prison at that particular time of the night? Whether they were protected? Whether they protested against it? No. It's only the female prisoner who spoke to this man in their language. And what did she tell them? I can't speak the language. Fat Kamara told me that a guy told, her, told him that this is very unfair, these people are female, so you need to be very mindful. And he told him that a female who behaves like a man, you pay him a man job. After that, where were you taken? We are drove into the NIE. At that point, being escorted in the middle of the night, how did you feel? Well, I feel s s skeptical because when they take me to NIE, I, t I believe anything can happen. As far as you can recall, the people that came for you, were they all male or did they have some females among them? They are all male. Being in the midst of an all male entourage operative of the NIA at that time of the night, what came to your mind? A lot has came to my mind but I cannot do anything about it. Can you please tell us exactly like what crossed your mind then? Well, I cannot. It's understandable. We'll proceed. So these all male entourage escorted you to the NIA. Can you tell us how you were taken to the NIA from the prisons? In the truck, I and Fat Camara, we were at the middle. One escort was in the left hand and another escort was at the right hand. At the back of the pickup, pickup also is filled with men from the NIA. While transporting you to the NIA, did they say anything to you on the way? Those at the back were communicating. They were having a telephone conversation, but we can't hear them and we can't see outside because the vehicle was tinted. So, Upon arrival at the NIA, can you please tell us what happened from the time the vehicle entered into the premises? When the vehicle entered, I, Fatu Kamara and Lamaro, we were taken to the same place where we were interrogated by one female. And this lady keep insisting on questions that if she asks me who are behind the protest, if I say I didn't know, he, she keep mentioning name these are the one I say no, I didn't know. She went to an extent of telling me that Mr. Dabo is part of it. I say no. And who are the sponsor of this problem? I said I don't know. So it was later after the interrogation, another one was taking part camera statement and Lamaro. One man came in. He speak in a mandinka. He asked the lady whether he she speaks, he said, no, she's not cooperating. She went to Lam he went to Langmarong and told Langmarong that you are an elderly man, you don't want to speak, but if we deal with you, you will talk. At the time when uh, they were interrogating you, take, in taking your statement, did they caution you? Caution me on what? Did they tell you, like, whatever you say will be used against you in court or that you are charged for a particular offense? No. 
were they writing down everything you were saying? They were not writing what I was saying. This lady is just writing what she feels is okay for her. When I say so, she write, and she never saw me the statement. She just wrote it and kept it. How did the lady appear to you? Well, I cannot recall. She's not friendly at all. She's just pressuring me to say things that were not okay for me. Can you recall the name of this lady? I didn't know the name of the lady, but she's a sizable woman like you. She's fair in complexion a bit. That's the way I can describe her. The person that came in and interrupted and asked if you have answered her questions, can you recall who it was? I cannot recall, but when I heard the voice anywhere, I will recall that this is the one. And what did this person do when he entered in? He spoke to me and left and went to Lamarong also and told him that you don't want to talk, but if we deal with you, you will talk. Can you please describe the setting? of that place where you were seated and being asked questions? Like, if you come inside the NIA, I think it's this end. Yeah. If you, I cannot, it's just like the right hand side. If you came in, just turn right. And can you please tell us what happened after your interrogation with this lady? After the interrogation, a tall man came inside the room. He put on a T-shirt and a military trouser. He just checked me, and I fall down where Fat Camera is. Fat Camera is out. He, she told him, you are killing me. He said, why should you even allow them to sit on that the seat? And this man just grabbed that camera and take him to the confinement where she was tortured and later came back for me and Lamaro. At the time when the man entered, can you please tell us the position with which you were in at that time? I was sitting like the way I was sitting talking to you and he came in and checked me. Fat camera was sitting there, Langmarong was sitting there, and there are other people sitting around. Where exactly did he kick you? At my wrist. What happened after he kicked you? I fell down where Fat camera was, and Fat camera was out. So, but we cannot do anything. At this point, did the man say anything to you? She said they, he said they should not even allow us to sit on their chairs. Why should the lady allow us to sit on their chairs? So we all sit down and on the floor and continue with the continue giving out our statement until when he came back to collect us one by one. At this point, when the man entered and kicked you and you fell on the ground and you continued sitting on the ground and you were interrogated. How did you feel? Well, I cannot tell. Can you please just help us describe what was going through your mind at that time? Well, by then I think I was between dead and life. I was between life and death. You were scared? Yes. How about Fatu Kamara? Did the same thing happen to her, like interrogating her and collecting her statement? Yes. Can you please tell us about what happened to her? Well, 
I think after that they just pick her and take her to the confinement. There she was tortured. You mentioned Alam in Maro. Where was he when this was happening? He was inside the same room with us. Did anything happen to him? Well, we were sitting where the man is coming and he's sitting at the corner. When the man kicked you on your waist, did you, did you have any injuries as a result of that? I still experienced pain from that end, but the injuries that I have was when I was tortured. Concentrating on um, what happened in that room, after they wrote your statement, did they read out your statement to you? No. Did they ask you to sign the statement? Well, I think I did so. This lady was taking this statement with a laptop, I believe. I cannot recall. Apart from this lady and the man that you said entered and kicked you, was there any other operative in the room? Except the man who came in and asked the lady whether I was complying. Can you recall the name of the man that entered and kicked you? The one who kicked me? I cannot recall the name. I cannot. 